Okay. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ertegrul, and uh, good morning, everyone. Let me first start by introducing myself. Uh, I am Ibrahim Farah. I am a uh, instructor of library and information science uh, at the University of Balamant in, Le in Lebanon. Okay, so our presentation today, let me share it first. It will be a complementary presentation of what Professor Orshun was telling you about. It is open access, but we will focus more on ethics matters and EU mandates, European mandate, mandates. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the outline. I will start with some definitions, of course. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about the traditional publication mode model. What are the drawbacks of traditional system, of the traditional system? What is the modern publishing or open access publishing and uh, open access in Europe, open access and ethics? What is the current status of open access and advantages for students and readers? And finally, I will introduce you to the self-licensing or open licenses, which is Creative Commons licensing. And we will finish with some questions and answers. So let me start talking about some definitions. Uh, as uh, you may know, uh, Dr. Orshun talked about uh, how it started, uh, the initiative, the open access initiative. It started mainly in 2002 in the Budapest Open Access Initiative. They define open access as the worldwide electronic distribution of the peer reviewed journal literature, completely free and unrestricted access to it by all scientists, scholars, teachers, students, and other curious minds. Also, the next year in the Berlin Declaration, they define open access as the free, irrevocable, worldwide right of access to and the license to copy, use, distribute, transmit, and display the work publicly, and to make and distribute derivative works in any digital medium for any responsible pur purpose subject to proper attribution of authorship. I may sound a little bit a copyright person because the definition includes a lot of copyright uh, concepts that you will learn with my colleague Donald later on in this training. So in, in brief, open access literature is digital, online, free of charge, and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions. So an open access publication, you can do whatever you want with it, unless you attribute the author, unless you acknowledge the author. So you only have to say that this information is from this author, and then you can do whatever you want with it. You can access it for free, you can create derivative works out of it, a derivative work mean a work based on an original. For example, if you have a novel and you want to translate it, the translation is a derivative work. So you can distribute it, you can do whatever you want with it. It is free to use, but you have to cite the author, of course, because it is a moral right. Uh, and this definition, the last one is coming from Suber in 2008. Okay, so to understand copyright the best, we need to, to look at the traditional publication mo uh, model. So previously, uh, usually, research is disseminated via journal articles and conference papers, okay? Right. So previously, the only mean to publish in the past was print. So we, only, we can only publish or disseminate research results in print through uh, articles, books, or conference paper. And we need to send our results to the commercial publisher, okay? Because they have the means, they have the printers, they have everything to disseminate our work. We rely heavily on the commercial publisher. So scholarly research was not freely access accessible under the traditional model of, uh, of uh, subscription-based journals. So when we send our research to a, to a publisher, the publisher will, will uh, publish it and will, uh, will publish it and provide it for money. So it's, it was not free of charge. It was behind a paywall, okay? So the access was not equitable and based on the ability to pay. So not anyone can access I appreciate your interruption at any time. This is a training and I'm not bothered with your interruption. So if you have any question, please interrupt me and ask, okay? I really appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, so access is not equitable in the traditional model because it is based on who can pay, okay? If you cannot pay, you cannot access the research uh, results. And research is not being disseminated widely because of the paywall as well. So. When, when it is behind the paywall, not everyone can access it and it will not be disseminate, disseminated widely. So let's look at the flow of uh, research paper in the traditional uh, model. So, and, and to look at the return on investment. So as uh, Dr. Orshun was talking that research is funded by the public, by the government. So it is 
uh, funded by the government. This is a public fund, okay? So the government give money in Turkey or in Europe, the government give money to scientists and researchers in universities to conduct research. Researchers acquire the, fund, the, the funds and produce papers. They write their papers. Now they have to disseminate the, the paper, so they have to send it to a publisher. So when they submit their paper to the publisher, what the publisher will do directly, they review the paper and they ask them to, send, uh, to sign a trans, transfer their copyright to the publisher. So the author will give all his rights to the publisher, okay? He will not keep any rights according to the publisher agreement or she. Then the articles are published, but in uh, a paying, uh, it, it is not, it is published not for free. It is behind a paywall. So it's published in a, in a journal that is uh, also, the journal will be uh, uh, sold to, to the university back uh, for money. So the library will subscribe to the database or to the journal and pay money for access, okay? So if we think about the flow, the money goes from the government, from the public, to the researchers, then the researchers will, will publish in open access, uh, not in, 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 uh, in traditional uh, journals. The traditional journals is not for free. So the return on investment is not accurate in this way. The, public, the publicly funded money is not benefiting the public. Okay, it is benefiting more the publisher because they are making money out of uh, the government fund. So what are some other drawbacks of the traditional system? The authors, they are not paid for the articles. So uh, no one pays the author to produce the articles. They are not paid for their work or their peer review because many publishers, they send the articles for uh, other authors to peer review and they don't pay them for this. So the publisher is not paying the author, neither the peer reviewers. Uh, must, most publishers require authors to transfer copyright to them. So most publishers, they want the author to sign a copyright release form to transfer all the rights to them. And authors had very limited rights as to what they could do with their own articles, such as copying and posting in institutional repositories or online. So when you transfer all your rights to the publisher, you cannot do anything with your, with your publication, even you cannot post it in an institutional repository. And this, this was a big limitation. So authors basically give away their work for free and institutions have to buy it back via subscription. So authors, they are professors in universities or researchers. They do the research for free. And then the same institution will buy uh, journals and subscription back for money, for subscription. So some money provided by the government does not have the desired impact on the public. And this will diminish access to knowledge, okay? However, in the modern way of publishing in open access publishing, we have another way of publishing. We, 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 cannot, we, we don't rely more on, on print now. We rely on online publication, on digital publication. So once the internet is created, we have a new method of online publishing, which is online, digital. And we can publish via different modes, like uh, Dr. Orshun was saying, we can publish an open access repository, which is called the Giving Route, or we can publish an open access journals, which is called the Gold Route. Also, some commercial publishers now, they offer the option to pay and make an individual article open access. So if the author pay a certain amount of money, they will publish the article in open access mode. So what is an institutional repository? An institutional repository is an online database, usually institutional, belongs to a university, for example, and providing free access to scholarly publication. So it is a, a database made by the university to publish all the research of the university in open access mode. Uh, they generally use open source software such as DSpace, ePrints, or Fedora, okay? And the repository can be also subject specific, subject based like PubMed Central. PubMed is a uh, database for medicine, the most famous one actually. Uh, originally based on model of self-archiving or self-deposit, so the author have to deposit their work in the database, okay? So uh, each author who would like to, to see his work in the institution repository should go and deposit their work there. And all the, uh, for all the research in the institution repository can be searched locally via search engines or via harvesters such as Oyster. Uh, open access journals are different. 
they are journals published for free in open access mode. So the, the content is free to end user. They are normal journals, but they are free of charge. They are published online free of charge. Uh, some of them are peer reviewed like any other journal. They use the author pay model. So what is the difference between the traditional model and the open access journals? The traditional model, they make money out of selling the journal while the open access uh, model, they make money by uh, from the money the author pay. So the author pay for publication. And of course, not from his own pocket. The, the, the author will pay the money from the government, uh, from the fund, from the government, uh, the fund provided by the government. Okay. So uh, the author pay money for the journal to publish the article to cover the publication fees. Okay. But the journal is published in open access mode. So it's, it is accessible by anyone. Uh, mainly, mostly, most uh, open access journals are published by universities or societies or not-for-profit publishers, and some of them are published by uh, commercial publishers. A good example is the Directory of Open Access Journals, which is doag.org. It contains millions of articles coming from open access journals and available for free of charge for anyone to use. So this is also the flow according to the open access return, return on investment. So as we said before, all research is funded by the public. And then researchers acquire fine funds from the, from the government to produce research papers. In this model, the, the author will submit the article to an open access journal for review. Okay, And then the author signed a copyright agreement to retain some of their rights and give other rights to the user. So in, in this case, the, uh, the author can retain some rights. For example, he retains the right to deposit an institution repository or retains the, the right to give his work to his students, for example. They retain some rights and uh, they give some other rights uh, to, the, uh, to the public. The articles are published in open access mode, either with or without an embargo period. So some uh, journals, they require an embargo period, which is the, you cannot access the journal immediately. You have to access it after, for example, a couple of months, okay? And some of them, they provide instant access to uh, open access articles. So in this way, people can download the article for free and the, the money funded, the public money, the government money is, has a big impact on the public. So it is a good return on investment if you are talking business. The, the, the public money is benefiting the public. In Europe, we have, uh, they support open access. The European Commission support open access through different programs and through uh, the initiative Spark Europe, which is one of Europe's key and longstanding voices advocating for unfettered access to research and education. So Spark Europe, they advocate for the open culture and the European Commission support open access mainly in uh, funding research. So, uh, for example, Horizon 2020 is the Commission's main research and innovation funding program. Uh, they provided up to 80, uh, until now, they provided 80 billion euros for research. But uh, Horizon 2020, they have uh, some criteria. They only give funds if you, if you agree that you publish your results in open access mode. So to support open access, they only provide funds for research that will be published in open access. So if you got a fund from Horizon 2020, you have to publish your research in open access mode. And they have set a strong signal by making open access mandatory for all Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, also, Open Research Europe is a scholarly publishing platform available to Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe beneficiaries. So Open Research Europe is the database or the platform where uh, the research papers generated from the Horizon projects are deposited. So it is like the institutional repository of Horizon 2020. So you can search all the data in there and find research articles for free. Uh, another uh, important source uh, provided by the European Commission is open access resources. Open access resources is also known as the library or the, the, the library of the uh, European Commission. So uh, it is a database where you, you can search for open access articles. And they also provide a list of open access search engines directories, repositories, and data. So here we have two uh, uh, screenshots from the EC library, which is the open access resources library, where you can search for information for free. 
Uh, and the second one is from Spark Europe, which is the committees, the societies that advocate for the open culture, for open access, open education, and open data. Okay, uh, open access and ethics. So as you may know, uh, or as you know, uh, in any matter, we have people who are against or people who are pro. So people who are pro open access, who support open access, they claim that sharing of data will lead to a more rapid scientific progress and the reduction in unne unnecessary duplication of scientific effort. So when we share our data widely, uh, people can access them and this will, will add to the progress of science. This will help science in, in the progress and it will re reduce redundancy. So when we have access to different data, we can see uh, if uh, someone has already worked on this on a specific subject or not. Also, we have the obligations of reciprocity concept. So uh, according to the obligations of reciprocity concept, the findings of a research funded by the public should benefit uh, the public, those who, who have paid for it. So the government uh, is funded by the, the taxes that they collect from the from the people and any publicly funded project should benefit the public this is what we call obligation of reciprocity it is an ethical obligation uh, also uh, people who are supporting open access he said that su that subscription based model of publishing are unfair because they require publicly funded academics to submit their work to commercially run journals to carry out peer review and sit as member of editorial boards and then to pay to access the fruit of their own intellectual labor. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, it, is, it is unfair because the money funded by the public goes to benefit the publisher. The, the author is not paid for their work, not paid for their peer review, and they ask them to, to sit as editorial board members as well, to, to serve as editorial board members and everything this uh, they do everything for free and at the end of the day they pay to access the fruit of their own intellectual labor so you pay to access your article even you cannot share your article if you have a copy of your article uh, you don't have copyright over it so you cannot share it with colleagues or with students current subscription-based system is conservative and has the potential to lead to a narrowing of intellectual and scholarly life so because it is very conservative because it is behind a paywall it's not accessible by everyone so it will it will affect negatively the growth of science and scholarly life on the other hand we have people who argue against open access but most of their argument is that we don't have an evidence based that open access model is better than the traditional way of publishing so they say that we need to develop an evidence based around which model of publishing is most likely to lead to a sustainable high quality research. So in this case, they, they focus on sust sustainability. They are claiming that traditional way of publishing are sustainable because they are published by prominent, well-established publishers and they are making money. So it is a sustainable business. So they guarantee sustainability of research. While they say that probably in open access mode, open access mode is not sustainable. So one, uh, once if you have money, uh, if, if, if authors pay for the article, we can publish a journal. If not, we cannot. So it's not sustainable in their opinion. Uh, the compatibility, compatibility of open access with sustainable research collaborations, this is what we are talking about now. And they also say that the gold access, like publishing in open access journals, it is similar to the subscription mode. In, in what sense? Because it favors the financial interest of the publisher. So in both, uh, in both uh, model, uh, the, pub the, the publisher have a financial interest. So when in the gold access model, uh, probably the publisher will only choose the articles of the author who pay to publish or who pay higher to publish in, in any case. So there's a, a, an interest, a financial interest in both, in both uh, models. Okay. So what is the, is the status of uh, open access, the current status of open access now? So according to the Lens Scholarly Database, which is a search platform with over 245 million references, open access represents 17.5% of the whole set and 35% of documents published in 2020. 
Also Dimensions is a selective scientific database with over 125 million references. Uh, they have 29% of open access documents overall and 53% in 2020. So almost the half or, or over more than the half of the publication in the database are in open access. So it is probable that in, in a few years, most scholarly publications will be open access and available through search engines and platforms for everyone to use. So we are going toward a, an increase in open access publishing. So in a few years, we will have probably most of the publication, most of the research will be published in open access mode, especially that they are supported by uh, many governments. Let, let's say Europe, the European Union, they support open access publishing and they push toward open access publishing. So this will lead to uh, an advance in, in open access publishing mode. So what are the advantages of, uh, of open access publishing to the user, to the student? Student can access free literature regardless of the budget for the subscription. So you don't have to worry about money. It is available for free. You can access it for free. Also, it provides a possibility of text mining and other form of text processing and analysis. So when we have open data, when we have open access articles, we can uh, access them and we can do text mining, we can do text processing and analysis, analysis because we have open access, open data. Users also access research literature regardless of the institution they belong to. So it doesn't matter to what institution you belong or if you belong to an institution or not. Anyone can access any research. It is universal. The access is universal. You can access it from anywhere for free on one condition that you have access to the internet. Also, in this model, professors can make available their own work for students to use. So, uh, as you remember, I told you when, when, when an author submits his article to an open access journal, they do sign a limited uh, copyright release form. So they keep some rights. They don't lose all their rights on their paper. So they can, uh, professor can choose to deposit their, their paper in an institutional repository, and they can choose to, to give their work to the student to use or to colleagues to use. They can share their work. Now, it is very important not to confuse open access publishing with illegal publishing or illegal content online. So, uh, Open access is totally legal because it is the author who choose to publish in open access mode, then it is, pub it is legal. However, we have some projects what, like the shadow libraries or shadow projects or illegal projects. Illegal projects or shadow libraries are personal initiatives that are built on hacking content from different databases and published uh, for free on the internet. So these are not open access, these, these are hacked content they are, they are stealing the content from someone else and they are publishing it for free. Uh, one big example is SciHub. SciHub is a project that started, the, that was initiated by a student, I guess, in Azerbaijan, I guess. Uh, she was not being able to reach research paper without paying money. So she decided to create a database, uh, a hacked database. So she created SciHub. She hacked millions of articles from different databases and provided them for free. Also, Library Genesis is another example of illegal or shadow projects. Uh, those projects are not considered open access, of course. They are deemed as hacked content. The use of such content may put the user in very diligent position. So using, intentionally using articles from those websites will put you uh, in a very diligent position as copyright infringer or as uh, you'll be a, you'll be subject to to liability or subject to to to, to the to the to get pro copyright problems actually okay so avoid those uh, websites uh, finally i will talk a little bit about self licensing or open licenses if you want to say open licenses so as we you, we were saying that open access is, is available for free but some people they would like to have a license that govern the use between them and the user. So in the copyright module, you will learn that created works are automatically protected by copyright. But copyright law is very strict and do not encourage sharing of materials, wide sharing of materials. Some people, they, they would like to publish online, but they would like to have some, to keep some rights and to give other rights. So how they can do this? They can do this by putting an open license on their work. 
using a website like Creative Commons. So they can choose an open license and put it on their work. So uh, uh, I will introduce Creative Commons to you. I will show you a short video about it and we will done afterwards. Let me stop sharing and share in different mode. Okay. So this is a short uh, introduction to Creative Commons. You want them to reuse your own work. Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share, and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the internet. Information and content can fly between us in exciting new ways. But it's important to know that when something is created, say a photo, a document, or a music track, it's automatically protected by copyright. Copyright enables people to say who can share and reuse their creations. You must always obtain someone's permission before sharing or reusing their work, even when it's posted online. But what if a creator wants everyone to use their work without the hassle of granting permission over and over? This is where Creative Commons can help. Creative Commons provides licensing tools that are free to use. You can apply a license to your work, which refines your copyright and streamlines how you give permission. Zach here downloads a photo called CC Kiwi that he wants to use in his science project. He can do this without asking Kiri, the photographer first, because she's already given permission with a Creative Commons license. Kiri's license is legally robust, but easy for Zach to understand. She's told the world, including Zach, that they can use CC Kiwi as long as they acknowledge her as the original photographer. There are more rules Kiri could have included. Creative Commons licenses are made up of license elements. You can think of them as rules, and each have their own special symbol. This is attribution. It means that Zach must acknowledge Kiri when he publishes his science project containing her photo. This is non-commercial. It means no one else but Kiri is permitted to make money from CC Kiwi. Tim wants to print the photo onto t-shirts and distribute them to friends. He can do this, but he must not sell them. This is no derivatives, and it means that Kiri hasn't given permission to change her photo. Kate can use CC Kiwi on her design blog, but will need to ask Kiri before retouching or mixing up the image. And this is share alike. It means new creations that use CC Kiwi need to carry the same license. Jack incorporates his own remix of CC Kiwi in his video installation, but he must share the work under the same terms that Kiri has. Each Creative Commons license gives permission to share and includes the attribution rule. So people who find your Creative Commons licensed work are automatically allowed to share it, but are required to acknowledge you if they do. The other three license elements are optional, and you can choose which ones to add, if any. Here are the six combinations that make up Creative Commons licenses. The difference between them is how many rules apply when someone wishes to use your work. The attribution license allows reusers the most freedom and the attribution non-commercial no derivatives license allows the least freedom. The attribution license and the attribution share alike licenses are sometimes referred to as free cultural works approved licenses. These three licenses restrict commercial use of a work. And these two licenses do not give permission for adapting or remixing. These two licenses require new works to be licensed under the same terms. To choose and apply one of these licenses and to view their terms in more detail, visit us at creativecommons.org.nz or you can answer some questions to help you decide which license best suits your needs at creativecommons.org slash choose. There are some good ways to find other people's Creative Commons licensed work online. You can use a search filter by going to the Creative Commons website. Or why not try the Gemendo website for music, Flickr for images, or Digital NZ for New Zealand content. Using Creative Commons licenses could help your creations reach more people. 
Maybe you want to connect with others across the globe and take turns at improving a report. Or maybe you just want to have fun remixing someone else's work. Whatever reason you have to share your work, you'll find there are scientists, educators, companies and public agencies who are using Creative Commons. By opening up permission, just imagine how much we can achieve. Collaborating on what we hold in common, being open about big decisions and finding solutions in the spaces between us. Let's work together, confidently and legally. It's good to share with Creative Commons. Okay, let me turn YouTube off and share the presentation again. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is Creative Commons and you use it to license your work. So you will be, you all will be producer of information in the future. Uh, you will write your thesis, for example. So you can choose to make your thesis open and you choose you put, to put an open access license on it, a, a Creative Commons license on it, so, so anyone can use it around the world. Uh, these are the, the elements of uh, the licenses. These are the licenses with the elements. The first one is the most open one because you can do anything, but you have to, uh, to provide the attribution to cite the author. And this is an open access uh, license. And the, the, the rest are, they have some, they provide some rights and they keep some rights to the author. So if you go to the Creative Commons license, you can answer some questions and choose the license that best suits you and put it on your work. Now, uh, and um, this, this, uh, this presentation was supposed to be a training, so it should be more interactive. We should talk to each other more and talk more. So I, ha I have put some questions here and I hope that you can talk, that we can share some thoughts together. So what do you think? Do you support the open access initiative? Do you think that it will advance or hinder research? What is your position toward shadow libraries? Do you consider them the Robin Hood of science or they are stealers? And would you prefer to publish in open access mode when you grow up as researchers or you prefer the traditional model? I would be so delighted to hear your voices or to uh, answer you on the chat. Uh, it's not a question and answer, it is a discussion. So feel free to talk and I'll be ready here to, to talk to you as well. Thank you for your listening. And this is the end of the presentation. I'll be waiting for your discussion. Thank you for your presentation. It was very valuable for all of us, Ibrahim. Also, you, uh, you already used your time, valuable. It was Thank very you. productive presentation. Also, as far as I know that Orchun is leading uh, creative common activities in Turkey, one of the leading people in Turkey. He, maybe he can say something about the uh, Turkish team's activity about the creative common. It, if he wants, of course. Of course. Thank you, Ertuğrul, and thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, this is very good presentation, and uh, I think our uh, students uh, very uh, maybe uh, get some information about the open uh, licenses and uh, in Turkey uh, me and uh, Ilkay uh, one of our colleagues uh, in uh, Turkish team and uh, we have both some uh, advocacy uh, events and uh, also some educational uh, events also uh, we create some uh, webinars uh, to uh, explain the uh, open culture and uh, Creative Commons uh, licenses, uh, but uh, it is not easy to uh, understand people why they uh, share their content uh, and uh, maybe uh, the cheap or uh, free or no money concepts are different. Uh, in Creative Commons, uh, you can also uh, earn money uh, from uh, open content. Uh, maybe uh, this is important and. Uh, we have to uh, explain uh, and we have to maybe give more example about uh, open culture uh, concepts and uh, also open licenses. Thank you again, Ibrahim. Thank you, Urchun. I have a question for you actually, uh, since you. you are representing Creative Commons in Turkey uh, and you are working in a university as well. So do you encourage the students uh, publishing their thesis under a Creative Commons license or you prefer that they publish 
under the copyright law. So do, do you encourage them to put a Creative Commons license on their thesis or their publication? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, in Turkey, uh, our uh, higher education uh, councils uh, said that all the uh, thesis uh, in open access, but mm -hmm. if you want uh, some, uh, put some embargo uh, to your uh, thesis, but in special cases, but okay. the, all the thesis uh, in open access in Turkey. The default uh, version. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Ibrahim, can you please share your last uh, slide, uh, sure. which includes the questions? Maybe sure. audience can would like to read, read them again. One. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there are there are some messages uh, on the chat box. Uh, many of them have, are thank messages and also Dr. Maud say something yes. about you and your presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Maud is saying that maybe we should reply to the people who are arguing against uh, open access, especially about sustainability. Uh, yeah, when I started the pre presentation, I didn't want to take a, a side, but uh, my point of view is that we are going toward a more sustainable open access mode. So, when, when the, the initiative started, it was like a project that, that uh, start and end at any time. But now we have a more sustainable open access uh, journals uh, that, are, that are published for years and they are documented in the do uh, directory of open access journals. So this is uh, not true. Uh, uh, open access is becoming more sustainable now, uh, but it will take more time to, to, like, to beat the traditional way of publishing, of course. And for students, uh, I would like to, to hear from them if, if possible, if, you'd if, they, if they'd like to comment about any of the questions. Uh, you will be producers of information in the future. So now you are a consumer of, inf inf you are a consumer of information. You need to access information that is the, mainly they are provided by your university. So if they are available in open access, you will, you will be able to, to, to get access to, to a wide range of, of open access research for free. But later on, you'll be producers of information. So would you like to publish in open access or in, or in traditional mode? Now, since you have been introduced to open access. I have a uh, Sabina on the last slide. Uh, Sabina is saying that she support open access uh, because we have many opportunities that have many opportunities. Uh, access to science should not be expensive or paid. And I believe that open access will advance research rather than hinder it since research will have an easier time in accessing research. Exactly. Uh, so this is the main point of, behind open access that uh, publicly funded research should benefit the public. So we should not have pay for open access. And of course, it will increase access to research and it will uh, ad advance science, of course. Thank you, Sabina, for your valuable comment. I think there is no more question uh, about okay. your presentation, Ibrahim. Great. Uh, now we are at the end of the uh, sessions and I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Also, I would like to thank you both Ibrahim and Orchun using your time effectively and for your present for your informative presentations. Uh, we will also uh, publish these presentations on our YouTube channel uh, in the coming days. If anybody who are interested in these kind of things, they can follow uh, Hermes project YouTube channel in the future. Uh, we are uh, also, I would like to remind uh, students, uh, they will get a survey link as soon as possible after the session and uh, they will have time till uh, at midnight of next Sunday. Uh, if they fill out the uh, survey, we will use those opinions and uh, answers to improve 
our service, uh, our training quality. Thank you for joining us today. Hope to see you all next week, next Friday afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a nice end of the day. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Have a good weekend. See you. You too, everyone. Bye.